and welcome to Strategic Purchasing and Supply Management. My name is Janet Eroglu and I'm an assistant professor in the Supply Chain and Information Management group of the De Mormican School of Business at Northeastern University. At this point you might be wondering what kind of a name this is. Turkish. I'm, I'm originally from Turkey and uh, my first name is pronounced like June 8, June 8, last name Arrow Blue. Okay, uh, you can always reach me at c.arrowblue at northneu.edu. Okay, so before we begin to be begin this class, I, I would like to make a few points. The first point I want to make is I speak slowly on purpose. The first reason is I do have an accent and I want you to be able to understand me without any problems. And the second reason I speak slowly is I want you to take notes. Okay, so watching a video is good, listening is good. But if you take um, notes, uh, you will benefit so much more and you will retain so much more of the information. So I suggest you take notes and take advantage of my speaking slowly. Another point I want to make um, at the very start of this uh, class is you will read a lot of literature on purchasing. You will read a lot of textbooks, a lot of articles, etc. But um, some of the most important points in purchasing are, are never mentioned. Okay? And uh, what do I mean by this? Typically, in any company, the most corrupt department is the purchasing department okay in purchasing department departments usually there's a lot of corruption going on okay and uh, the challenge for many companies is not to find uh, skilled employees okay uh, the challenge usually is um, to find honest employees Okay, so what do I mean by corruption? Um, the thing is, in purchasing, um, you spend someone else's money. Okay, so when people spend someone else's money, they are less careful with the money. And a lot of times, um, purchasing, purchasing professionals are approached by less than honest salesmen and um, they get sometimes what is called a kickback okay so what that means is that when uh, so for example uh, if I need to purchase something for a company and I may have two alternative products uh, one product may be better the other product may not be so good but then the person who sells the less than uh, the, the less good product uh, can offer me, offer to bribe me. So he might say, well, if you might buy my product, you know, I, I, I'll take you on a vacation, all expenses paid, or I'll buy you a gift, etc. So unfortunately, in purchasing, there, there's a lot of corruption going on. So a big challenge of purchasing managers is how to avoid this kind of corruption okay it's not only unethical it really hurts the bottom line it's bad for business um, so so as purchasing managers I want you to uh, I want to you to keep in mind that uh, there's potential there's a lot of potential for corruption as we go through the chapters keep this in mind that there might be corruption and think about ways of avoiding this kind of corruption when you become a purchasing manager. Okay. Um, 
Another point it, uh, I would like to mention at the beginning of this class is um, when you look at the purchasing transaction, okay, uh, it's also a sales transaction. Actually, it's, it's one, one transaction. And uh, there are two parties. There's a buyer and a seller. And uh, what happens is that uh, and what happens is that um, uh, two parties have different perspectives and different objectives. So they get engage in one and the same transaction, but they have different incentives and different objectives. Okay, the salesperson and the purchasing person okay, engage in a sales transaction, purchasing transaction. One of them wants to achieve the highest price, the other one uh, is trying to achieve the lowest price. Okay, so we're going to talk a lot about purchasing, but always keep in mind that there is a salesperson on the other end of the deal, okay, and you have conflicting goals. Now, um, how can you make a business relationship work uh, and work for both sides when there's this kind of competition going on? So these are the two main, main ideas that we'll, we'll think about through the entire course, corruption and the uh, dual nature of the purchasing transaction, okay? So in this presentation, uh, uh, I would like to talk about uh, basic terminology, okay? And then I would like to discuss how purchasing can lead to strategic advantage. Uh, and then I would like to discuss uh, the development of purchasing over uh, multiple decades. And then um, I'd like to discuss how for purchasing relates to all the other departments in a firm. And finally, I'd just like to briefly go over careers in purchasing. Okay, lesson one, okay. Supply management is not the same thing as supply chain management. Supply management and supply chain management are two different things. Now they may be related to each other, they may have overlap, they may be similar in certain ways, but they are not the same thing. Okay. So um, in this uh, presentation, I want to go over the terms purchasing, procurement, and supply management. Okay. So th those will be the basic concepts in this course, but they don't happen in a vacuum, okay? Uh, they occur against a background of a supply chain, okay? Supply chain is the context of, of these top, uh, concepts, okay? And um, of course, when we talk about supply chain, we need to talk about supply chain management and logistics management. So what I'm going to do is first start with the supply chain concept, uh, talk about supply chain management and logistics management. And against this background, I would like to describe what these terms are. Okay? So without further ado, what is a supply chain? This is a supply chain. Okay, so it, this is a fairly simplified representation, but um, at the heart of every supply chain is the focal firm. Okay, this is the company that you're working for. Okay, um, let me write it down here, focal firm. Okay, so the focal firm has customers. So this company sells to these customers, okay? And these companies sell to these customers. 
and these customers sell to their own customers. Now question, does the um, supply chain go on forever? Like customers, their customers, their customers, etc. The answer is no, it doesn't. The supply chain ends with consumers, okay? So the consumers are here, okay? So the consumer is here, and uh, I, I'd like to make a distinction between uh, a consumer and a customer. Customer is general. An individual can be a customer, an organization can be a customer, a company can be a customer, uh, the government can be a customer, okay? But when we're talking about the consumer, we're talking about a specific individual, okay? So, so this person buys a product to consume, okay? And if this pro uh, person wanted to resell the product, then that person would be a customer, but not a consumer, okay? So the person, whoever buys a product to consume, that is the final end user and consumer, okay? So uh, there's the focal firm, focal firm's customers, their customers, etc. So how do we differentiate between these different levels, okay? Uh, we have a term called tier, okay? So the focal firm's immediate customers are uh, called tier one customers, okay? And the focal, focal firm's customers' customers will then be tier two, okay? Tier two, okay? So we have tier one customers, tier two customers, tier three customers, tier four customers, potentially, all the way to uh, the consumers, okay? Now, uh, we also have suppliers, okay? Uh, this focal firm purchases raw materials from these suppliers. And these suppliers buy products from these suppliers. And these suppliers have their own suppliers, etc. So again, we use the same terminology. So we have uh, tier one suppliers, okay? We have tier two suppliers, okay? Tier three suppliers, etc. Now let me ask you the same question again. Does the supply chain go on forever? Tier one suppliers, tier two suppliers, tier three suppliers, etc. No. The supply chain uh, begins with raw uh, material suppliers. Okay. So, so basically, the supply chain is uh, starts with raw material suppliers and ends with consumers. Now, there are different types of uh, movements, flows, in a supply chain, okay? Uh, the products move from raw material suppliers to consumers, okay? So that direction is called uh, downstream, okay? Downstream. Downstream means something is moving in the direction towards customers, okay? And you have also an opposite direction when something's moving towards raw material suppliers. That's called upstream, okay? So downstream is towards customers, closer to consumers. Upstream means closer to uh, raw material suppliers. Similarly, um, uh, there are two other uh, terms, uh, inbound 
and outbound. Okay, what is inbound and what is outbound? IB, short for inbound, means something that you are receiving, that something that moves towards you. And OB means, uh, for uh, short for outbound, means something that's going away from you. Okay, so um, for example, if there's a, if you have an inbound shipment. It means that shipment is coming to your company. If you have an outbound shipment, it means you're shipping it uh, away from your company to your customers, inbound and outbound. I also would like to differentiate between consumer demand and derived demand. Okay, so all demand is derived from consumers. What does that mean? That means if the consumers purchase more from the retailers, the retailers will purchase more from wholesalers. And when, wholes uh, when retailers purchase more from wholesalers, the wholesalers will purchase more from the manufacturer and so on and so forth. So, so when the government wants to stimulate the economy, uh, what they usually do is they give consumers a tax break. So what what happens then? Uh, the consumers with a with a tax break, consumers have more disposable income that they can spend. So they start spending more, and when per, uh, when consumers purchase more, retailers purchase more, and then the wholesalers purchase more, the manufacturers purchase more, etc. So the entire economic activity increases. Okay. So these are some of the basic terms related to the supply chain. Now, uh, we have talked about tier. Echelon is a synonym for tier. So tier and echelon are the same thing. We have talked about the differences uh, between a customer and a consumer. We have identified upstream and downstream directions, inbound versus outbound, consumer demand versus derived demand. Now, um, what kind of entities are in a supply chain? Okay, so obviously, the supply chain uh, includes the focal firm, okay? Uh, and then you have the focal firm suppliers, the supplier suppliers, their suppliers, etc. And then you have customers, their customers, etc. But you also have third parties, okay? By third parties, I mean um, organizations and firms that do not buy or sell anything but they facilitate the movement of products and services across the supply chain, okay? So for example, trucking companies, warehousing companies. So these facilitate the movement, the shipments, uh, the movement of shipments, products, goods, services across the supply chain. And then you have consulting firms, maybe a firm, a company, a manufacturer, needs help with planning, with optimization. Consulting firms help there. Uh, law firms, purchase contracts, okay, the legal matters. Okay. And then the government agencies are also a part of the supply chain. So when you're considering the supply chain, it's a mix of many different organizations. So for example, if you're importing or exporting something in your supply chain, then you have uh, customs authorities involved. Sometimes you have Department of Transportation that regulates shipments, okay? So again, when we're talking about the supply chain, we're talking about a very diverse set of organizations. Now, Companies represent their supply chains in 
many different ways, ranging from very simple to very complex. Here is a very simple representation of a supply chain. Okay, so uh, there are vendors, suppliers, and then there is sourcing. Sourcing means uh, purchasing raw materials from the suppliers. And then you have inbound storage and transportation. Okay, and then here you have operations. This is where raw materials are actually used. And then you have uh, outbound storage and transportation, and this is where you ship your products to consumers and your customers, basically. Here's a uh, more complicated supply chain. Okay, so here you have three plants, and each plant has a dedicated warehouse or storage facility. Okay, so each uh, storage facility supplies one plant, but each storage facility receives products from different suppliers. So as you can see, it can get, these shipments can get very complex very quickly. Okay, so how much product will you ship to each storage facility? When and what type of products? Okay, and on the outbound side, you have plants uh, supplying different warehouses which are dedicated to their own markets. Okay, suppose each plant produces a different type of product. Again, you need to plan how much to ship to each warehouse and when. Okay. Now here's an even more complicated supply chain. Uh, this refers to a, uh, uh, I think this is a fashion or, or clothing apparel supply chain. And the raw materials can be either natural fibers or synthetic fibers. Okay. And from the fibers, once you have the fibers, you can produce yarn and fabric, cloth. Okay. Once you have the cloth, uh, you ship the cloth to garment manufacturers. Okay. And then once the garments are uh, finished, you can ship them to uh, wholesalers. So these are the wholesalers. And then you have a number of retailers. So you have department stores, specialty stores, mass merchandisers, etc. So as you can see, uh, supply chains can get very complex very quickly. Okay. So, so the question is, now, why should companies care about their entire supply chains? Why cannot they be just working with their immediate customers, okay? So, so if, if I'm a manufacturer and uh, if I ship my products on time, if I get paid on time, isn't this the end of it? Why worry about customers beyond tier one? Why worry about customers beyond immediate customers, okay? There are a number of good reasons why a company should worry about uh, customers beyond tier one, okay? So one reason is uh, if your customers cannot sell, you cannot sell, okay? So all uh, demand is derived from consumers. So even if a manufacturer doesn't directly sell to consumers, even if a manufacturer sells directly to a wholesaler, the manufacturer uh, should advertise to consumers. So for example, uh, we are inundated with uh, commercials from the Coca-Cola company. However, uh, even though we as consumers 
see co the Coca-Cola commercials, the Coca-Cola company does not sell directly to us. The Coca-Cola company sells its product to bottling companies. The bottling companies sell their products to retailers. The retailers sell to us. But it's in Coca-Cola's best interest to advertise to consumers, which are way beyond tier one, because Coca-Cola knows if the consumer demand increases, the retailer demand will increase, then the bottler demand will increase, and they will sell more. Okay, So the idea is never forget where the ultimate demand originates from. Now, let's think about the example of Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola ultimately sells its products to consumers. However, there, these products reach the consumers in multiple ways, and these are called marketing channels, okay? So, or, or the distribution channels, okay? So a company will typically have multiple distribution channels, okay? So you can go uh, buy a Coca-Cola product from a mass merchandiser like Walmart. You can go uh, buy Coca-Cola products from, let's say, a gas station or a convenience store, okay? So now these uh, distribution channels should work uh, in coordination with each other, okay? Uh, well, wouldn't they always work in coordination? No, because they sometimes get into rivalries. They sometimes start competition among themselves, okay? Sometimes they start pricing wars. So as a result, what happens is that uh, the manufacturer will suffer when the different distribution channels start acting up, and this may hurt the interests of the manufacturer. So a company, it's uh, in a company's best interest to follow the product through all the different distribution channels and manage these distribution channels so that the total sales are ultimately maximized. Okay. Another reason uh, for uh, looking beyond tier one customers is, as we said, all demand is derived from consumers. And ultimately, companies need to understand uh, what consumers want and need. Okay? So, again, in the e example, continuing the example of the Coca Cola company, so as Coca Cola develops new products, okay? they need to listen to their consumers. They also need to listen to retailers and wholesalers, okay? The idea is, it's not just the immediate customers, you need to listen to your distribution channel and you need to listen to the needs and wants of the consumers, okay? So this is another reason why uh, companies should look beyond their immediate or their tier one customers. Um, another reason uh, is, well, sometimes uh, customers are hesitant to buy something if they feel like they cannot return it easily or they cannot have a product repaired easily. Okay, so companies fix that, companies fix this problem through what is called reverse logistics. Okay, reverse logistics means uh, having the product shipped from the customer to the retailer to the wholesaler back to the manufacturer, maybe for replacement, for return, or, or for repairs. Okay, so uh, the better a company's uh, reverse logistics system works, the more satisfied are the customers, okay? And the less risk customers perceive, 
in buying a product. So if the customers know they can easily uh, return the product, they can easily ship the product back for repairs, etc., uh, then they are more confident, they're more likely to purchase a product, and they're more likely to be repeat customers. Okay, so how can you make good reverse logistics happen? You make that happen by working with your distribution channel members. So you need to work not only with your immediate customers, but then their customers, their customers, all the way to consumers, so that you establish reverse logistics channels that work effectively and efficiently. And this is another reason why companies need to manage their supply chains uh, beyond tier one. And uh, finally, this is another reason why companies should look beyond tier one, because supply chains are rarely, if ever, um, static. Supply chains are in constant evolution, okay? So there are always new companies starting up, new markets opening up, new business relationships established. So it's always uh, in a company's best interest to keep an eye on the supply chain. What is happening with the wholesalers, what is happening with the retailers, what's happening with the consumers, etc. So it's always a good idea to keep an eye on the distribution channel and see if there are new opportunities that can be leveraged. In the opposite of is also true. Some companies go out of business. Some companies start selling certain products, okay? There are also threats in a distribution channel, okay? A company should also be prepared to face these um, um, threats in a, in a distribution channel uh, by looking beyond tier one customers. Now, let's ask the same question about the supply side. So, for example, uh, if, if I'm a manufacturer and if I receive my raw materials on time and if I make my payments on time, why should I worry about any other suppliers? Okay, my immediate suppliers are just enough. Okay, I, I need not worry about my supplier suppliers, their suppliers. Isn't this the end of it? Well, the answer is no, because there are a number of good reasons why a company should look beyond tier one suppliers, okay? Now, the first reason is your suppliers' costs are your costs. What does that mean? This means the suppliers pass on all of their costs to their customers. Okay, so if your supplier, supplier, supplier has a cost, that is cost, that cost is passed to your supplier, supplier, and then to your supplier, and eventually to your firm. So what do you do about it? Well, the thing is, um, if you want to drive costs out of your supply chain, in other words, if you want to achieve the lowest possible raw material costs. You need to talk to your suppliers, to your supplier suppliers, their suppliers, etc. So uh, a number of years ago, I was um, talking to uh, Wendy's, the fast food company, and they wanted to reduce their raw material costs. And uh, so they said, let's start with the most expensive raw material that we buy. Can you guess the most expensive raw material when Wendy's buys? It's chicken. So they wanted to reduce the cost of the chicken meat. And to do that, they have traced the supply chain for chicken meat all the way to the egg producer. So they wanted to make sure that no unnecessary costs were uh, incurred at the egg, by the egg producer, by the chicken grower, farmer, by the meat processing plant, and the distributor of the chicken meat. Okay, 
So they wanted to drive out all unnecessary costs uh, at the supplier level, supplier supplier level, supplier supplier suppliers level, etc. Okay. So, uh, so this is a good reason why you should um, look beyond your immediate suppliers, beyond tier one suppliers. Uh, another reason why you should look beyond tier one suppliers is, I like this uh, 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 abbreviations like FIFO, LIFO, but this is G-I-G-O, stands for garbage in, garbage out. Just like costs, bad quality is passed on to customers, to their customers, etc. Okay, so a, a product is typically composed of multiple components that are produced by multiple suppliers. So what happens is that if uh, my company receives poor materials, my product's quality will suffer. And when I sell that product, my customer's product quality will also suffer. So the idea is to identify where all the problems can occur and then to fix them at the earliest possible instance. Okay, if, if uh, my product quality suffers because of my supplier, it's too late for me to intervene in my, in my firm. I should address the quality problem at its source. It may be uh, with my first tier supplier, but it could be with my second tier supplier, third tier supplier, etc. So for quality problems, uh, it's always a good idea to look beyond tier one suppliers. Okay. Now, um, here's, here's another uh, good reason for uh, looking beyond tier one suppliers. Okay. Uh, disruption risk. Okay, what do we what do we mean by disruption? Disruption means when when a supplier uh, runs out of raw materials and it stops making products. Okay, so so what happens to the entire supply chain? Can the rest of the supply chain function? Usually not, okay? So if a supplier stops making uh, products, then the supplier's customers will start to uh, stop production as well, okay? So the disruption will be propagated across the supply chain. So to avoid uh, this kind of disruption, to ensure availability of raw materials, and to ensure that the supply is reliable, okay, you need to uh, analyze the entire supply chain and see who depends on whom for raw materials and see uh, where raw material shortages pose the greatest risk to the supply chain, okay? So you need to look way beyond tier one suppliers if you want to ensure reliability and availability of supply. New product ideas and innovation. Companies love, love, love new products. Why? Because new products are more profitable. That's why Apple keeps coming up with new iPhones every year or every two years. Well, what's wrong with iPhone i6, iPhone 6? Well, nothing's wrong, but, it, you know, in a few years, um, the Apple will want to uh, come up with a new product for which they can charge even more. So for new products, companies need, companies need ideas. They need innovation. Where does innovation come from? It comes maybe from your immediate suppliers, or it may come from your supplier's suppliers, 
their suppliers and their suppliers as well. So it's always a good idea to look for innovation ideas, maybe new materials, maybe new production technologies, etc. In, in your suppliers, their suppliers, etc. So it's not a good idea to limit yourself to your immediate uh, suppliers for new product ideas. And, and uh, so these product ideas can not only help you increase sales, maybe they can save you cost, maybe they can help you increase your quality as well. And finally, there are always uh, new opportunities and threats in a uh, supply network. Uh, just as in the case of customers, uh, there are always new suppliers that, that are started or maybe some old suppliers go out of business. So it's always a good idea to keep an eye on how the supply network changes over time. Okay, here's a very simple representation of a supply chain. Uh, raw material suppliers, manufacturers, distributors, retailers, and consumers. Okay, and there are three types of flows in a supply chain. The first flow is product flows. Okay, physical products, goods, services move in this direction, downstream. Uh, from raw material suppliers to consumers. Can you guess the second uh, flow? Yes, it's the cash flow, right? So uh, customers pay retailers, retailers pay wholesalers, wholesalers pay manufacturers, manufacturers pay raw material suppliers. So, so these are the two kinds of flows. Can you guess the third type of flow? Yes, it's the information flows. And the thing, uh, the interesting thing about information flows is they uh, they go both ways. So firms exchange information uh, both in both directions. Now let's think about the uh, the flows a little bit more. Um, which one do you like best? Obviously, we all like cash. We like money. We want. We want to maximize cash flows. How about how about product flows? They are costly. You know, if you need to ship something, if you want to ship something, you need to pay. So this is a cost. So what do companies want? They want to minimize cost, maximize revenue. Okay. Let's think a little bit about that. So. Um, can we have a business? Can we develop a business plan where we minimize product flows? Let's say zero product flows, zero cost, no shipping cost, but we have cash. So we're getting paid, but we don't have to worry about any products or services or anything. There's no flow this way. I mean, wouldn't that be the best business plan ever? Well, actually, you could go to jail for doing something like this. Because if you take people's money and not produce and, and deliver anything, any products or services, you know, people can sue you and, and you could go to jail for that. So the idea is these two flows are not independent. Okay, cash flows depend on product flows okay so if you want to speed up your cash flow you need to speed up your product flow okay so so why because the faster you make the deliveries the faster you get paid so what if something goes wrong with the product flows let's say your product flows slow down well obviously your cash flow is going to suffer. Your cash flow is going to slow down as well. What if the product flow slows? Uh, what if the product flow stops completely? Guess what? Cash flow will stop too, okay? 
So the companies love the cash flow, obviously. But in order to maximize the cash flow, in order to, to improve their cash flows, they have to manage the product flows. Okay, you must optimize the product flows to optimize your cash flows. You cannot treat your cash flows independently. And what determines cash flows? Product flows determine cash flows. And that's why you must manage your product flows. Okay? So what is, what is the name of this? Like, what, what is it called when a firm uh, manages their product flows? It's called logistics. Okay? Uh, there are multiple definitions of logistics. And I have picked this particular definition of logistics for a good reason. And the reason is, this definition is given by the Council of Supply Chain Management Professionals. This is the professional organization for logistics and supply chain professionals. Okay, They are the authoritative uh, professional association. Okay. So uh, this is their definition. They say logistics management is that part of supply chain management that plans, implements, and controls the efficient and effective forward and reverse flow and storage of goods, services, and related information from the point of origin to the point of consumption in order to meet customers' requirements. Okay. Wow. What a definition. Let me break it down for you. This part, plan, implement, and control, is management because these are the three basic functions of a manager. A manager plans for the future, implements that plan, puts the plan into action, and then controls uh, the results, evaluates the results, and takes corrective action if necessary. Okay. So logistics management is managing something. What are we managing? We are managing the flow and storage of products, services, and related information. So we're managing product flows. More specifically, in a more detailed fashion, we're managing flow, shipments, transportation, and we're also managing the related warehousing and storage activities related to goods, services, and related information. Okay? Now the question is, where, where, where do these flows occur across the entire supply chain? So it says, from the point of origin to the point of consumption. So all the way from raw materials suppliers to the consumers, okay? So we're managing the flows across the entire supply chain. We look beyond tier one customers, we look beyond tier one suppliers across the entire supply chain because everything is related. So, so like why, like where we, what, what do we want to achieve in logistics management? We manage these product flows. We want them to be efficient, effective, forward, reverse, etc. But what's our ultimate goal in logistics management? It is to meet customers' requirements. Okay. So, so first of all, let me. Uh, uh, talk a little bit more about this in, in bullet points. So this definition tells us that, first of all, logistics management is not the same as supply chain management. Okay? How do I know? I know because logistics management is part of supply chain management. So log uh, supply chain management is broader and one part of Supply chain management is logistics. Another part is purchasing. OK? 
okay we're gonna come there we're gonna come to purchasing uh, shortly so so we're talking about logistics uh, logistics is more narrowly defined and it is part of a broader supply chain management concept okay and um, uh, logistics is about managing planning implementing and controlling product flows flow and storage of goods services and related information and we want uh, these uh, flows to be effective and efficient and we're considering both forward flows and reverse flows okay so reverse logistics is also included uh, and uh, we're looking at the entire supply chain not at the immediate customers and immediate suppliers we look beyond immediate customers and suppliers all the way from the point of origin to the point of consumption to meet customers requirements okay so these are the basic points uh, made in this definition now at this point you might be wondering what are the customer requirements what do customers want okay first of all customers want the right products in the right place at the right time in the right condition and at the right cost okay so this these are the customer requirements so so don't ship the customers the wrong product don't ship the product to the wrong place uh, ship the product on time okay uh, make sure the product is not broken or damaged or stolen and offer a good price okay this is what customers want and these are the things that we want to achieve by managing the flows so the flows should be managed so as to achieve what customers want these are the customer requirements now we said um, supply chain management is a broader concept okay let me briefly tell you about supply chain management also and uh, just like with logistics supply chain management also has multiple definitions and I picked this particular definition because I think it's very comprehensive and it goes something like this supply chain management is the integration of key business processes from end user through original suppliers okay that provides value uh, I'm sorry that provides products services and information that add value for customers and and other stakeholders um, first of all this definition um, is not about physical flows it's more about processes okay uh, what, what, what does it do with the processes it's about uh, managing and integrating processes like the purchasing process like the uh, production process etc uh, these processes should be integrated uh, within a company intra-company means within company and intercompany means between different companies okay so what do you mean by what what do I mean by integration uh, let me tell you this the opposite of integration is uh, when a process works like a patchwork so multiple companies may be working together but if the process is not integrated every company will work independently and there will be a lot of mismatch between the companies similarly within a company different departments will work together but then if the process is not integrated uh, there will be a lot of disconnect uh, a lot of discord mismatch between the different departments why because the process is not integrated 
and the departments are working independent of each other. There's poor coordination. Okay. And then we want to integrate key business processes. Okay. So the company needs to think about which processes are actually adding value, which are the most important value adding processes, and try to streamline these processes within their company as well as across their supply chain partners. Okay? So this is a much more much broader concept than logistics. And purchasing is part of this. And purchasing is a process that needs to be integrated across multiple companies as well as within a single company. And this is the context in which purchasing occurs. Now, as I said, there are different definitions of supply chain management, and uh, I just want to give uh, a brief overview of these. And my, uh, my suggestion is not for you to go out and, and debate people and argue with them. Um, the, the point is you will meet people with different understandings of what supply chain management is. Okay? People come from different backgrounds. They may have different ideas about supply chain management and when you understand exactly where they're coming from you can communicate with them more effectively and you can work with them more uh, efficiently okay so um, in addition to what we just talked about supply chain is also defined in different ways for some reason supply chain management is the same thing as logistics that's, that's what some people think. For other people, they say uh, logistics is within a single company. And when you're talking about multiple companies, uh, that's, that's supply chain management. Another view. And, and some people say supply chain management is a sum of purchasing, operations, and logistics. Again, another point, uh, point of view. I'm not saying one is right or, or the other one is wrong. I'm just saying, you know, there are various views of supply chain management. The, the, the definition I gave you in detail, in my opinion, is the most comprehensive, most inclusive. Uh, but there are also these uh, less comprehensive, less inclusive definitions of supply chain management. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, these days you will hear um, different terms uh, like demand chain or value chain, okay? So we're talking about supply chain management. You may be wondering what's the difference between supply chain management and demand chain management. What's the difference between demand chain management and value chain management, okay? All of these terms are synonymous. They're all one and the same thing, okay? So they all mean the same thing. And, uh, and you might be wondering, if, if they're the same thing, why do people, do people keep coming up with new names for the same thing? To blame are the consulting companies. Why? Because as they ran out of ideas to sell, as they run out of services to sell, they come up with new, sexier, flashier names and label their old ideas with new names and then they try to resell the same thing to their customers. At one point in time, when it first came out, everybody was about, oh, supply chain management blah, blah, blah. The com uh, consulting companies made a killing. They, they made a fortune selling this idea. After a while, okay, everybody learned about it. What do the um, uh, consulting companies do? Now they come up with demand chain management. So now they're trying to resell the same ideas under a new name. After a while, demand chain gets sold. What do they do? Value chain. Sound do you see how sexy it sounds? 
they're all the same thing. But uh, but uh, but there's a point to be made here as well because supply, demand, and value have different roles in a supply chain. Okay, let me explain. The role of this uh, the role of supply in the supply chain is that the supply physical products define the supply chain. What do I mean by that? The, if you want to know which companies are in your supply chain, if you want to map your supply chain, you need to follow the supply, the product flows. If you trace the product flows, if you trace the supply, then you will know uh, who sells to whom, who buys from whom, etc. And then you will you can map out your supply chain and you will know who are your first tier customers, second tier, third tier, etc. As uh, similarly on the supplier end. So basically, the members of the supply chain and the structure of the supply chain are defined, determined by supply. Demand derives supply chain activities. Okay, whatever happens in a supply chain, when something happens in a supply chain, to what degree something happens in a supply chain, are all determined by demand. Okay, so for example, production. Um, what do companies produce is determined by demand. How much companies produce is determined by demand. When companies produce is determined by demand. So whatever happens in a supply chain is driven by demand, is determined by demand. So demand derives the supply chain. And, and this is very important. Uh, Members of a supply chain are members of a supply chain only for as long as they add value to the supply chain. Okay, A supply chain has its members because every member adds value to the supply chain. As soon as a uh, supply chain member stops adding value it will be automatically excluded from the supply chain a company that stops adding value will be bypassed immediately and it will be excluded from the supply chain so it's very important to understand how your company